Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is November 1st, 2024. Let's talk sports, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now that Jet win on Thursday night, yesterday, over the Texans is huge, right? I want folks to look at that AFC carefully. Look at the stumbles of the Bengals, the Ravens who haven't run away with anything, the Chargers, the Dolphins, the Colts. You know, from this seat, it looks to me like the Jets, who have six losses, still have a chance to make the playoffs. Look at their remaining schedule. <clears throat> it's a bit shocking. But I only see one game they should lose on that remaining schedule. That's when they play Buffalo in Buffalo. Right? What I want people to realize, too, is Devontae Adams just got off the bus. He's still figuring out his way around the locker room. He knows Aaron, doesn't really know everyone else, hasn't played with everyone else. Rodgers hit him for a TD. Rodgers throws three TDs on the day. <clears throat> the Jet offense is getting its footing. And make no mistake, the Jet defense is actually a high potential unit. Right? Take a look at the Jets. I know people are afraid to bet futures. I know it's fashionable, it's trendy to criticize Aaron Rodgers, right? Because Rodgers openly questioned the COVID approach and, uh, you know, Rodgers made statements. We're all curious about how uh, Robert Sala got fired. Um, the bottom line, folks, is that this is a live team. Things are in flux in the AFC, right? Um, the Jets' schedule really favors them. Uh, if they go 10-7, and seven, folks, they're in the playoffs. This is a team you don't want to play in the playoffs. Let's talk about the NBA. <clears throat> Again, these are just random thoughts. Let me also make another point before I go to the NBA. Futures. You know, a few weeks ago I was on here and I mentioned um, the possibility of a future on the Washington Commanders, a team I don't expect to win the Super Bowl. But at the time, they were going off at 100 to 1. Well, let's just do the math, right? If someone told you that they turned one unit into five, by making a plus 100 bet five weeks in a row, because that's what it would take. Um, we would all be patting them on the back. Well, understand the way futures work. You bet one unit to win 100, right? This is the options market equivalent of sports betting. Suddenly, Jaden Daniels, who isn't just a rookie of the year candidate, folks, he's a Pro Bowl candidate, Jaden Daniels has this team in contention, right? And, of course, teams of which a lot was expected in the NFC, Cowboys, for example, uh, in the commander's division, are stumbling. In other words, there are wins there for teams to pick up. There is uh, the possibility of a playoff seeding for teams to pick up right now in the NFC. So, let's say it gets to late in the season, and folks, I'm making this video in November. Right? Understand, the commanders now are not going at 100 to 1. They're 25 to 1. Right? Just understand, if you have the possibility of 100 to 1 on the other side of the ledger, you don't even have to get close to the playoffs. Starting in early December, depending on the matchup, you could say, hey, you know what? Let me bet 10 bucks, one tenth of my possible winnings on the other side of the play in some weekly matchup involving the Washington Commanders. Let's say I pick a team that's 
favored over the commander. So let's say I'm getting a minus 200. So that 10 buck bet would win me five bucks, right? So I'm taking a favorite over the commanders, right? Maybe by December, the league will have figured out Jaden Daniels. They haven't as of now, right? Just understand if I win that 10 buck bet and win $5 off that 10 buck bet, then I will have started with an initial outlay of one unit, right? That's the unit where I got the 100 to one odds and I would have turned it into five units and I would still have several weeks left in the season right I would have gotten the five units by hedging off the 100 to one leverage I got taking the commanders so when we're talking about futures I don't believe we're talking about peripheral bets I believe the future should be your main course understand what ultimately would happen in the scenario I gave let's say the commanders then fade right they've already had a great season they have a rookie quarterback it's all new um, you know let's say they don't make the playoffs just understand you would have gotten a five to one return off of fooling around with them on futures even though they didn't make the playoffs. Figure it out. Let's talk NBA. Just two years ago, at the top, in terms of big men in the league, I'm talking about center guys, right? There were two guys. One was Joker, one was Joel Embiid. Right? This is just two years ago. Both of these guys won MVPs. Right, Joker, multiple MVPs. That was the top for centers. Now, just two years later, you have two superior athletes. I'm not saying they're superior players, but you have two superior athletes who have entered the league. I understand they don't always play center. I understand you're going to see them lingering around the three-point line chucking up threes. But these are two of the best defenders at their position. These are two of the dominant shot-blocking players in the league regardless of position. One is Wemby. Right, folks? Wemby, his rookie year, was a major threat to win Defensive Player of the Year. That's the talent level we're talking about. The other is his nemesis, let's buckle up. This is going to take several years to play out. And that's Chet Holgren. Right? Holgren has the better team. Holgren and Shea Gillius Alexander, oh my goodness, those guys work in tandem. Right? That's a duo that should never break up. That's like Magic and Kareem, quite frankly. Right? That's like, and let's talk about a duo that did break up. That's like Penny and Shaq. They should never break up. Right? Alan Trammell and Whitaker in baseball. Well, let's just say Chet Hulgren and Wemby have crashed the party. Now, suddenly, we have a guy who's not getting noticed. When you read about him, it's, you know, the fact that he gets into the league and then, of course, fouls out, I believe, his first game. Something I don't think Wilt ever did. Right? And that's Zach Eady. Now, Eady is interesting. This is the craftsman. He's not the freak athlete that Wemby or Chet Holgren is. Right, but this is the guy who can leverage a 7 4 height with back to the basket skills and the ability to shoot with his left or right hand. He has a hook, both hands, that's unstoppable. Unless the guy guarding him is Wemby. Right, folks, dare I say it? 
And we're coming out of the small ball era. We're coming out of the Splash Brothers, right? You know, teams really without centers who are running up and down the court, right? At one point, the Golden State Warriors had Andre Iguodala in the paint, right? Draymond Green is seen some nights in the paint. As a child of the 1980s, you understand that would not have happened in the 1980s. Right? A Patrick Ewing, a Moses Malone would have looked at a Draymond Green in the paint and said, hey, forward, what are you doing in my neighborhood? You know that's the way it would have played out. Folks, we're getting back to that. The big men are back. Right? Look around the league. Right? And when I say big, I'm talking about guys who can get down low. Guys who aren't going to watch you take your shot. No, guys who are in your face trying to block your shot. Joker and Embiid, who two years ago had the whole range to themselves, now are having to deal with other guys on the frontier. Take a look at that development, right? I know John Morant got a triple-double yesterday, right? Folks, if I'm a GM, I'd much rather Zach Eady over John Morant, right? John Morant is going to give you, what, 60 games a year? Right? I want the big man who every game is going to bother people in the paint. I want the big man where when his shot is off, I'm still getting boards and blocks. Right, I want the ability for the team when they can hit threes to be able to go half court. And to know the offense is going to be effective. Let me close by saying this. One of the things I consider in making football bets is the career record, the winning percentage of the quarterback. I believe quarterback matters that much. Right? I'm aware of the fact that the splits, for example, don't really show that Kyler Murray is that much better if he's better at home. Right? You understand when um, a team faces a Lamar Jackson, if the team doesn't know Jackson, if the team's from the NFC, Jackson has a decided advantage. I mean decided. You know, look at Jackson's winning percentage. Look at Pat Mahomes' winning percentage. Once you see it, you understand, okay, maybe I need to adjust all these other numbers in recognition of the fact that this quarterback is a wrecking ball. A quarterback with some of the better career numbers is once again, I say once again, Proving to a team that had him on the bench that he's the best quarterback on the roster. Right? Last year, he got a team into the playoffs. They were, they were struggling. I don't know what's going on with their starter, but they were struggling. He got in. He got them into the playoffs. Right? This year, some young gun who got picked very early in the draft was out there struggling. People like Greg Cosell were looking at film and it's one of the rare times where Greg, who tries to find the good in analyzing every quarterback, had a problem finding the good in analyzing Anthony Richardson. So once again, once again, a guy who the owners are not in love with. Right? This is not the dream date. This is the, okay, my dream date didn't work out. What's my plan B? Well, in Indy, as it was last year in Cleveland, the plan B is Joe Flacco, who if you look at his career record, you're going to say, gee, why isn't this guy more highly thought of? Right? Joe Flacco is going to, QB the Colts 
there's a whole group of fans out there. Colts are 500 right now. I'm not saying the record is dazzling or anything like that, but there are a bunch of gamblers out there who are looking at the Colt rushing attack, who are looking at Colt defense, and who are thinking to themselves, man, if they just had a guy who knew how to drive this car, they could get on the track and pass some teams. Folks, they may have found their driver. Right, the Joe Flacco story is interesting. Think about the money that was made by gamblers looking at the Browns last year who thought to themselves, man, with Flacco, this team, <laughs> this team's making it happen. Right, you get out of the Flacco train and suddenly you're, you know, pulling into stations with money just sitting there on the platform. Right, let's keep an eye on Flacco. Now, in the lead position with the Colts. Right, we view Flacco as a guy who amazes us by still being in the league. Maybe we should view Flacco as a guy who's amazing us because he's still winning games. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.